wind and the temperature are fine, the field is very, very wet and could be a factor, especially if the rain continues. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Zabriskie, and along with Will McDonough, we welcome you to the NFL on CBS. Two teams, as I said, very young and somewhat similar with regard to their records this year, Will. But there's a lot more about these teams that's similar than their losing record. Well, what we're going to see here today, Steve, is two of the youngest teams in the National Football League. You're going to see two franchises that have sacrificed the one and loss record this year to play the kids. But what we will see in this game is a game that hits as hard as any other today because they play with exuberance and intensity. They certainly do, and they have uh, played very, very well, especially defensively of late. As far as the quarterbacks are concerned, a lot of attention is focused, of course, around Vinny Testaverde. Chris Miller for Atlanta has played very well, and Vinny's still trying to find himself. Well, Steve, because they were first-round choices a couple of years ago, naturally everybody's going to look at the quarterbacks in these games. Atlanta says that Miller has played with a lot of poise, a lot of leadership. But the Tampa Bay people say, yeah, but is he asked to do the same things that Ray Perkins has asked Vinny Testaverde to do? Perkins says he is not spoon-fed Testaverde. He has given him the complete offense, and maybe this is the reason that Vinny is struggling to date. Well, Vinny will have a little bit of help, and as will the Tampa Bay Bucks. As you look at what the Falcons have done, they are one in five here at home, and that is one reason why, as the old saying goes, many of the fans here in Atlanta Fulton County Stadium came today disguised as empty seats. Falcons have not been drawing very well. But they will receive. They won the toss and elected to receive. Tampa Bay defending the goal to our left. And John Carney, recently signed to replace Donald Iguiguique, is kicking off to either Evan Cooper or Tim Gordon. Gordon spinning to the 30. And dropped there, so Atlanta will have fairly decent field position as they go on offense first and 10. Chris Miller says he is finally completely healthy for the first time this year. And he will lead the Atlanta offense as he has done so well. They have been a far better team with him at quarterback as opposed to Hugh Millen or anyone else for that matter. He'll face this defense with Davis Jarvis and the pig, Robert Goff, up front, the front three. Murphy, Marv, Coleman, and Moss, the linebackers. And in the secondary, Reynolds, Futrell, Hamilton, and Robinson. Robinson coming back after an injury, his first start in a few weeks. Gerald Briggs back in the backfield, and Robert settled behind him. Riggs returning last week for the first time in seven games. This is John Settle, who picks up about four to the 34, before Harry Hamilton, number 39, the free safety, brings him down. John Settle did a great job while Riggs was out. Now it's Riggs and Settle practicing this week together for the first time practically all year with the rookie Haynes, Dixon back from an injury, and the tight end, Wisenhut. Ken Scully, Radloff back, Bill Fralick in there, and Houston Hoover, the rookie, 300 pounder at right tackle on second down Gerald Riggs out of the tailback spot for a couple across the 35 it'll be third down at about four Reuben Davis and Kurt Jarvis combined on the tackle they'll mark it at about the 36 the Joneses not playing for Tampa Bay Rod and Victor Kerwin Bell the third string quarterback out of Florida and Vincent Smith inactive for Atlanta. Two on each team have to be declared inactive off the total roster prior to each game. Now a whistle stops play as Atlanta breaks the huddle and it was the head linesman who asked Johnny Greyer, the referee, for a moment. Now, Greyer's going over to the far sideline. What's happening here, I believe, is there's a problem with the clock, because they keep on pointing in the, in the direction of one of the end zone spot. There's the referee, Johnny Greyer, who went over to the bench and said, I think he told Ray Perkins we're having a trouble, some trouble with the clock, and maybe they'll keep it on the field. We'll see what happens. It also could be a problem with the coach's headsets, because... The Atlanta coaches sort of spoke to the linesman, the line judge, Ron Bloom, first, and then Johnny Breyer went over to the camp. So maybe no headsets. Yeah, it was the headsets, and it probably has to do with something all the rain we had here today, trying to communicate with the box. Certainly has affected every time today. Third down and a long three. Miller has protection and has a completion for the first down. Floyd Dixon. 
with his 22nd reception of the year. Dixon, one of the players who has gone to the visor to protect those eyes. And he's wearing it because of a cheekbone injury. Well, good thing it wasn't still raining. And the windshield wipe is here today. He is Miller back. He loves to throw to Dixon. He, he said yesterday when we talked to him, and Dixon's back for the first time in a few weeks. They just needed a short yardage pass, and that's when he went out. Ran a cert, went out and just ran a little out patent on the defensive back. And this is really an offensive receiver's day because of the condition of the field. It really hurts a defensive back. And that shield to partially protect that injured cheekbone of Dixon. So first and ten Atlanta from their own 45. Miller completes it to John Settle out of the backfield. And Settle picks up about seven before Mark Robinson, the strong safety, brings him down. Robinson for Tampa Bay also just returning this week. As I mentioned, when Miller came on the field, he has really made a difference in this team, Will. They are totally different with him and without him. Well, Marion Campbell, the coach of the Falcons, uh, told us yesterday when we talked to him, he provides great leadership. The guys on the team believe in him. They not only believe in him, but they like him. And Marion says it's very important for the team to like the quarterback and to get along with him and have great faith in what he can do, and this team does. Again, Johnny Greyer, the referee, going to both sides. So maybe he got the word now that the Atlanta headsets are working again. And now he's telling yeah. Tampa it's okay to use your communication. Very good, because all the Falcons, the coaches, are putting their headsets back on. Even it out. This is what they always do, Steve, whenever this happens. You've got to even it out. You can't have one team have headsets going to the, the people upstairs and the others not. But you know guys cheat. <laughs> <laughs> you know they do. Second and a long two. Briggs. Good hole. Got the first down. And he's into Tampa Bay territory at about the 43 before Mark Robinson, the strong safety, and Sidney Coleman, at linebacker, bring him down. With Riggs and Settle, Settle averaged over 120 yards a game while Riggs was out. And with the two of them in the backfield together, Atlanta's ground game figures to be back at full strength. It can be formidable. We mark it at the 44, where it's first and 10, Atlanta in the opening possession of the game. Settle. Picking his way for a few down near the 41 in the grasp of Winston Moss out of the University of Miami. Gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Eleven minutes to go in the first quarter as you look at Marion Campbell, the Swamp Fox, they call him. Back for his second stint here in Atlanta in his second season. He's seven and 20. His overall NFL record, 30, 68 and one. And Ray Perkins also in his second year and also with a record of seven and 20. So two teams with youth rebuilding and on exactly the same track so far. Miller swings it out to Riggs. Riggs close to a first down as he dives onto the grass of Eugene Marv. Tampa Bay's leading tackler will depend on where they spot the ball. It'll be near the 33. And it does appear to be enough for a first down. Miller does a nice job of this. He looks downfield, looks off the receiver. Riggs is going to slip out to your left. See him number 42? Look at the block out here by John Scully taking the corner back to the outside. Riggs is a tough runner, very strong and forceful. Gets up to the field. What's big here in this drive is big for the psyche of both teams. Tampa Bay likes to think that they can stop the run. They're number one on defense in the league. And I think Atlanta wants to come out and say, we can run it on you. And if they have a long time possession drive like they're into right now, this could really hurt Tampa Bay on defense, particularly saying, hey, they took it out and shoved it right down our throats, and they're not supposed to be able to do that. Well, even Chicago had trouble running against Tampa Bay. They are looking at the replay. You can see the umpire with the microphone, Art Demis, and there's the replay booth. Al Sabato, the replay official, and they're marking where Riggs was down. They're reviewing and may move the ball back. If they move it back very far, it won't be a first down. And here it is, as you see, Eugene Marv bringing him down. Now, if you go by where his knee went, Will, it was behind the 35. There's the contact. Yes, but see, what he does is they shouldn't give him the slide. Upon further review, the player was down at the 35-yard line. It's third down. So they move it back a couple, and it is going to be third and one. 
Marked at the 35 as Johnny Greyer explains it to Chris Miller. What they do there, Steve, is you couldn't give him the slide, which he has on a field like this today with the grass being so wet. So they just try to look at that replay and say, if he had extended his arm, where would it have been if he fell in a natural motion, even though his knee touched right there? And you bring it back, and now they have third and shot rather than a first down. Miller has completed his first three passes. They've all been short, eight, seven, and six yards. So third and one at the Tampa Bay 35. As you can see, Atlanta's already had the ball five minutes here in the first quarter. 9.42 left to play in the first no score, and Riggs with a first down, down near the 30. And again, it was Eugene Marv, 99, along with 39, Harry Hamilton on the stop. So first and 10, Atlanta, near the Tampa Bay 30. Riggs had a leg injury, and one of the things that makes Gerald Riggs so tough, Will, are those tremendous legs he possesses. What you, what you try to do when you play Riggs is try to make him run outside tackle. He's a great runner, tackler, tackle, but he doesn't have outside speed. Now, unfortunately for Tampa Bay today, they haven't been able to stuff all the holes and make him bounce outside. When you do that, because he lacks speed, all your linebackers can catch up to him and keep him in the backfield. But Mike Kinn and John Scully on the right side of the Atlanta line, and they're as good as probably as any right side in pro football today, have done a marvelous job in this first drive. Rookie James Primus, number 49, is there in motion as a lead back. Riggs has the ball and gets across the 30. The line of scrimmage was the 31, so he gains two to about the 29. Reuben Davis, the rookie out of North Carolina, made the tackle. It'll be second down and about eight yards to go. Sidney Coleman, a rookie out of Southern Mississippi, injured muddy and that won't take very long for those white uniforms to get obliterated today trying to walk it off second and eight Riggs again good haul and straight up the middle inside the 25 to about the 23 Winston Moss again on the tackle and Atlanta's doing, Will, exactly what they wanted to do, and that's run the football right at Tampa Bay. Steve, they've already had it for over seven minutes. They're running it. They're pounding away. And they're really being a right-handed team here so far. They're just going right in there behind Scully and Ken. Like we said earlier, they're a terrific pair. You know, Ken has been in the Pro Bowl many times. He's really the only 32-year-old guy on this team. He's, he's, he's the old he's man. He's the old man at 32. And, and Marion Campbell's saying, yes, he could play another four or five years with this group. Third and two, Atlanta two for two and third down conversion. John Settle stops and will not pick up the first down as he gains maybe only a yard. Robert Goff, they call him Pig, number 94, stepping up to meet Settle. So the kicking team comes on on fourth down and about two and a half yards to go. Tampa Bay decide they better do something and just stand there. Here comes the blitzer inside, and this ruins the timing of the play. They try to run a little trap inside with Scully. See him, 61. The timing was ruined when one of their safety men came up, popped through the hole, and threw everything off. Greg Davis, a 40-yard attempt, and it is good. Out of the hole with Chris Miller. Atlanta cashes in on a long, time-consuming drive to lead 3 to nothing with 6.47 to go in the first. Atlanta eats up eight minutes and 13 seconds, more than half of the first quarter, a 40-yard field goal by Greg Davis to make it three to nothing Atlanta, and Davis will now kick it off for the Falcons. And there's Donnie Elder, number one in the NFC, best in the NF, fourth in the NFL, and best in the NFC at kickoff return. He's flanked by Jeff Smith and Don Smith, but Tampa wants Elder to get it, and he will at about the 11. Slips, he can get up, however. Gets outside and makes a pretty good return out of it as he gets across the 25 after falling. Elbert Shelley, number 37, ran him out of bounds. Here's Vinny Testaverde, and if you heard the interview Will McDonough had on the NFL today, prior to the start of the game, Vinny said, I've made 16 starts, today's my 17th, 
he looks upon this, Will, as the beginning of his second season. Yeah, and he's also confident that it isn't going to be the rule of thumb for NFL rookie quarterbacks that it takes five years to be a good one. He thinks the process is going to start to speed up now, and hopefully he'll be where he wants to be sometime early next season. So Tampa on offense for the first time. Lars Tate, the ball carrier, hit as he crosses the 30. Picks up a couple, but not much happening in the middle of the Atlanta defense. Gann, big Tony Casillas. And Rick Bryan, the front three. Andre Bruce in line for rookie of the year. Grady, Tuggle, and Reed, the four linebackers. And in the secondary, Butler, Case, Gordon, and Moore. And Gordon at free safety has earned the starting job. Starting for the second week in a row. Testa Verde now on second and seven. Lars Tate again, trying to get outside. Breaks a couple of tackles and then is knocked down by Robert Moore, the strong safety, number 34. But Tate made a lot out of very little. Testaverde leads this group for Tampa Bay today. William Howard and Lars Tate, pretty strong running tandem. Carrier, the rookie, Hill and McGee at tight end. Gruber, Malloy, Grimes, Bruin, and Taylor, the front five. Third down, one yard to go. Tampa at their own 36. William Howard, the long set dog. That's the Verde's first pass. Intercepted by Andre Bruce. McGee runs him out of bounds. It was intended for the tight end, Ron Hall, as Tampa went with two tight ends. But Andre Bruce who has six sacks to lead all rookies, picks up his second interception of the year. Testaverde takes his drop. He looks out to his right, wants to look, throw short, get the first down. Now he comes outside of the containment. He has a chance to run here, but he sees his receiver get behind Bruce, but the mistake he makes is he doesn't throw the ball up in the air, Steve. He throws it on the line. This allows Bruce, number 93, to come in and pick it off get to the opposite side of the field, turn the ball back over right away to Atlanta. A 10-yard return by Bruce. Atlanta has the ball at the 46, first and 10. Play action by Miller. All day to complete it, and he does to John Settle. And Settle ridden out of bounds near midfield by number 59, Kevin Murphy. Settle the leading rusher and the leading receiver for Atlanta this year. He could become the first free agent in the NFL since the 1970 merger to rush for over 1,000 yards in a season. He needs less than 100 to do that. And here's the CBS Sports Wire to bring you up to date of what else is happening around the league. Second down and six. Right at midfield. Seven. Picking for yardage and falling forward for a few to about the 47 in the grasp of Winston Moss and Kurt Jarvis. I think we should point out, Steve, to the people watching, that this field is terrible. This is considered the worst playing field in the National Football League, and it's probably, it, it certainly is worse than it usually is here today because of all the rain. They're playing in the mud. It does not have the crown in the center of the field because the Atlanta Braves play baseball here that most footballs have. As a result, when you have a heavy rain, you don't have the runoff. The water stays in the middle of the field. You can see the track down the middle of the field where all the grass is gone. So that's why the heavy footing is in there. You can walk, watch it today with these backs and linemen. They really can't move with the usual quickness. Third down and three. And Atlanta looking for some quickness with three wide receivers. And Miller under pressure completes it. The number 84, James Milling. And Milling is thrown out of bounds, but not before he gets the first down. Ricky Reynolds. Makes the tackle on Milling, but it's an Atlanta first down in Tampa Bay territory. This is what the Falcons want to do. They're a shot yardage team, whether they run or throw. Miller steps inside the containment, looks outside, throws it outside, gets the ball out there. First down. What they're doing is they're keeping one receiver underneath at all times, Steve. Everybody goes deep. They take the Tampa Bay zone deep. Tampa Bay plays a lot of zone. And then they just, he steps up and pops the ball. Not looking for it. We're going to con control the ball. 
contain them on our offense, and this is the way they're going to try to beat Tampa Bay today. And in that replay, you could see John Settle running downfield to clear that zone for Milling, and it worked perfectly. From the 38 of Tampa Bay, first and 10, John Settle the ball for and he stopped behind the line of scrimmage, right at the 40. So it'll be a loss of about one. Let's go to Brent Musburger for an NFL Today update. Well, Steve, all the Bears have to do to clinch a playoff berth, win today against Green Bay. Bears strike first. Neil Anderson is 10th touchdown of the year. Seven zip. Back to Steve. Thanks, Brent. The Bears on a roll. And if the season were to end today, of course, the Bears would be in the playoffs as division champs. Playing Green Bay, that might, that might be all they, they need because the Packers have scored 22 points in the last four games. Seven might be enough. Okay, especially the way the Bears can play defense. Second down and 11 after the loss of one by Settle. Three wide receivers in. Miller looking long over the middle. Intercepted. What a run by Harry Hamilton who got away from what appeared to be a sure tackle with a nifty move and Hamilton brings it all the way back to the Atlanta 30. His fourth interception of the year. Hamilton out of Penn State. Okay, Miller's back. They have three wide receivers, but they bring Gene Lang, an excellent receiver, out of the backfield. He runs down the left seam. But here's Hamilton playing center field. He steps in front of him. Now he comes back up the right sideline. Watch him. He'll make a move on John Settle. Picks up a block. He has great speed. The only guy that's going to catch him is Michael Haynes, number 81, who is an Olympic sprinter this year. He got eliminated in the qualifying trials. He got beat by Kyle Lewis. 10-3 speed. That's why he ran him down. There was another guy that could do it. Hamilton's fourth straight game with an interception. So Tampa first and 10 at the 33 of Atlanta. Lars Tate and a penalty flag is thrown as Tate gets inside the 30. Jesse Tuggle and Tim Gordon make the tackle. And the preliminary indication is holding against Tampa Bay. So the run by Tate will be nullified. Holding. 60 offense, still first down. So the call on Randy Grimes. The center, they call him Bubba. And like Marion Campbell, he is an aficionado of country and western music. Generally when you see a flag come out that early, particularly on a first down, the umpire is looking for it. I mean, that, ball, that flag was in the air no sooner the ball was snapped. So maybe they something was said to them during the week, watch this guy, he likes to hold, but they were right on him. That flag was out of it. Or nose man started to see it, said something before the play started. Testa Verde chased in the pocket, fires over the middle, incomplete intended for William Howard. A very catchable ball dropped by Howard, and Testa Verde's problems continue. He's been picked off again today. See, that's what happens to a quarterback. Now, he did an excellent job. He got pressure, backed up a little bit, Threw the ball right on the money, and Howard simply dropped it. If he caught it, he probably come up the field for another 10 yards. But that goes down as an incompletion when they look at his stats tomorrow. Like he was 7 for 22 last week against the Bears, but he, he threw a lot of bad balls, but he also had a lot, of a lot of them dropped all over the place. Sometimes it looks like it's something contagious to where the receivers also are a little tender. Second down and 20. Draw to Howard. Running hard, but getting very little. He's across the 40 to about the 38. In the grasp of Andre Bruce and Rick Bryan. Gain of four as Ray Perkins looks on. And it's third down and 16. Tampa trying to capitalize on the turnover and the 58-yard interception return by Harry Hamilton. And he has completed 48% of his passes coming into this game. Out of the shotgun. And a high snap handled well by Testa Verde. And a completion that may be just short of the first down. Mark Carrier came up with a sliding catch at about the 23. And depending on where they spot the ball, it may be inches short of the first down marker. Couldn't do a better job. One-handed grab by Testa Verde. He's got good hands anyhow. Makes the right read. Gets the coverage he wants. Carrier makes a nice move to come back and get the ball. I think he might be about a foot or so. Or maybe, uh, maybe even closer than that to a first down. And I think in this situation, with the way they haven't scored this year, Tampa Bay will probably go for it. 
Well, it looks to be enough. So the spot was to Tampa Bay's favor. And just by the nose of the football, the Bucs have a first and 10. At the 22-yard line of Atlanta, the Falcons leading three to nothing in the waning moments of the first quarter. Pitch to Lars Tate. Trying to get outside, nothing doing. Big number 99, Tim Green, in his third year out of Syracuse, was out there to close down the corner, and the clock runs. The clock is not running. It is running. One clock is running and one isn't. So that's going to be the end of the first quarter here in Atlanta. Three to nothing, Atlanta leading Tampa Bay. Well, Vinny Testaverde's been under fire, and of course, yesterday Will McDonough talked to him about that public criticism that he has faced. It's okay for everybody outside the team to get on me. That doesn't bother me as much, but when you got uh, your own team or your own family, so to speak, uh, jumping on your back and giving you a hard time, that's what makes it rough. Yeah. And that's when you start to lose confidence, but that hasn't happened, and I don't see that it will happen. Well, one thing you can say, Will, is that Ray, Ray Perkins has certainly stood behind him, and uh, even though he's been critical of Vinny, he has supported him at the same time. Well, he's been around him long enough now to see the great talent they got with Gale when they drafted him, and they just think it's going to take a little while for it to come to the top. Second down, 10 yards to go as we start the second quarter. Again, leading 3-0. Testaverde lost one up. In and out of the hands of Lars Tate. The ball a little underthrown. John Rady, number 59 on the coverage. And Tate flirting with a touchdown reception. You're right, Steve. It was a little underthrown, but it was a great throw. He's coming back. Don't forget the footing. He gets the pressure up the middle, throws off the back foot. This ball should be caught right there. Should have been caught. The ball, you know, he had a chance to adjust, but uh, to make an apology for Tate, no footing there today for him to really plan to set up and get in position to catch the ball. On the dry field, that's a touchdown. It's raining only very slightly right now, but it's been raining off and on. And it's a problem for everybody. Shotgun on third and ten. Tampa Bay with four wide receivers, and Testaverde throws it into the ground, but he slipped as he tried to plant his back foot. It was intended for Mark Carrier. So it'll be fourth down, and the field goal unit comes on. We're in Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Steve Zabriskie along with Will McDonough bringing you the NFL on CBS. In the opening moments of the second quarter, Atlanta controlling the ball for 11 minutes of the first quarter and a 40-yard field goal by Greg Davis to give them a 3-0 lead. Now the field goal attempt will be by John Carney, who was working as a golf cart attendant in West Palm Beach when he got the call and Donald Iguibuike pulled a hamstring last week. So Carney's first regular season NFL attempt is no good. There is a penalty marker down on the play, however. How many guys in Atlanta got in the field? Maybe they got an extra one. Usually when well, the, the flag comes out like that, they threw it at Atlanta. They sometimes slipped that 12th man in there. Well, if there was, he was offside. <laughs> No matter how many they yeah. had, he was offside. Because I saw one of the officials running in and uh, starting to count heads. So Atlanta offside. Here's a call by Johnny Greyer. And Carney will get another chance. Offside, 93 defense. Still fourth down. Andre Bruce trying to block that field goal offside. So the ball moved inside the 20 to the 18. The spot now will be about the 25. Connie better be faster on this one than he was on the last one. He took an awful lot of time moving on that ball. It was a, an excellent snap and a good hold. He's got to be a little bit quicker. Great Quizwell, the punter is a holder. No block. It was a low kick, and it's blocked. Finally picked up. 
by Bruin. John Bruin picked it up. It's it looked as if Greg yeah, Brown he, blocked it. But he kicks it into the line right there. Knight gets a hand up, makes a deflection. So Atlanta will take over, and what fans are here are loving it as the Falcons hold and lead three to nothing. Tampa Bay already feeling the loss of Donald Iguibuike, who from that distance would virtually be automatic as John Carney had it blocked. And Tampa Bay still leads three to nothing. Of course, the successful field goal would have tied the game. So the Falcons back on offense first and 10 from their own 20. 14 and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. John Settle in motion and Joe Briggs with the football. Breaks for a gain of three or four is all. And let's take a look at the field goal one more time. Yes, Connie, I think he's a little slow. So he does it. Look at the ball is in the hand of the holder before he moves. Now, watch for the arm of number 98. You can just see the eight right there. Greg Brown coming up the middle. The defensive lineman gets his hands on it, blocks the kick, and plays all over. They bring it out, give it to Atlanta, and say, here, it's your turn. Brown out of... Kansas State in his eighth year. Second down is Chris Miller. Looks to throw, sets up the screen, but nobody to screen it to. As either he overthrew the ball significantly or Riggs was just late getting out there. So it's third down and seven. Phoenix and Philadelphia now tied. Chris Miller now five of seven passing for 34 yards and Atlanta faces another third down conversion they are three of four today Dolphins at their own 23 and they're in big trouble sack inside the 10 a penalty flag goes down Reuben Davis, number 79, and Sean Lee, number 97, back there with some help. Davis at 290 pounds, a rookie out of North Carolina. And the preliminary indication is holding against Atlanta, so the sack will stand. And Atlanta will have to punt it away from their own end zone. Miller unable to get the ball away. Holding, 78 offense. Decline. Down. Veteran Mike Ken, the culprit, as Jeff Smith drops back to receive Rick Donnelly's punt. Donnelly averaging 39 yards a kick this year. And this will is a tough day for kickers and punters. And this well. Under pressure, gets it away. Smith gets away from it. Ball takes an Atlanta roll back near the 40 of Tampa Bay. So the Bucs will have pretty good field position and the football trailing three to nothing. Dancing through raindrops, I guess, is the caption for this thing. It has really picked up again and raining very hard now. It's what you could term a downpour. And as you can see, the wind is absolutely no factor. When it's raining this hard, the wind can't blow, I guess. It is coming down in buckets. So the conditions of the field will worsen as Tampa Bay goes on offense first and 10 from their own 40. William Howard banging straight ahead for a couple before he shoved back. Gains one or two. Now Tampa Bay has pretty good field position, Will, but they should and could have better field position if Jeff Smith would have come up on this punt. Jeff Smith had it. First of all, he's standing 60 yards away from the punter. Rick Donnelly was at the back of the end zone. This ball has to be caught. On a day like today, the rain getting hotter every second. Field position is everything, and that was a 25-yard mistake. He should have come up. He would have returned to 10 or 15. Instead, he let it go by for another 10. It turned out to be a 50-yard punt for Donnelly with no return. Second down and about nine. And it's raining even harder now. Lester Verde locks one out, and it's complete. At about the 50-yard line, Mark Carrier with the reception. Very close to the first down, but it appears to be short. Vinny looks at Carrier all the way, which you don't like, but he gets the ball out there in a hurry. Carrier just plants in front of Scott Case, who comes over here to make the tackle. 
on a field like this, this is what the receiver can run all day. He has the advantage. He knows when he's going to stop. Case, in that instance, didn't know when he was going to stop, and he keeps backpedaling. So even if you look right away at the receiver, if you throw it hard enough, he can still get it out there and make the play. The receivers know where they're going, and the defensive backs have a tendency to play a lot looser under these conditions. Third down and one. Case stopped right at midfield. He only had to get just across the 50-yard line to get the first down. So we'll see where it's spotted and if, in fact, he got enough. A lot of the fans have, uh, well, first of all, there aren't a lot of fans here, but a lot of the fans that are here have sort of headed for cover with this downpour. Those fans who are not under cover some of them are taken off, and uh, as you can tell, most of them came prepared, and they still can't handle it. Management told us yesterday that they sold about 40,000 tickets for this game. They anticipated about 40,000. I'd say they're lucky if they got half of that right here. Yeah, and they also said that a day like today kills the walk-up ticket sales. Just people just don't come out and buy tickets in the morning of the game. Apparently, the 30-second clock has expired as... Offense! Still for sale! They're going to be moved back now. As they picked up the first down, it'll now be first down and 15. The ball back at the Tampa Bay 45. Testaverde with great talent, trying to find himself. And Miller, drafted in the same year, has just done a super job. All that's been asked of him. And today, Miller outperforming Vinny so far. First and 15. Complete the carrier, and he's blasted by Scott Case as he makes a diving catch just across the 50. So a gain of six or seven as they get the penalty back, and it'll be second down and about nine yards to go. Make it eight. I would think the Falcons, I mean, uh, Tampa Bay is going to work on that one all day, Steve. You know, uh, both times he went right out there, stopped. And, uh, there was a five-yard spread between the receiver and the defender, and until Atlanta adjusts, Tampa Bay can come over here and get it. And that's what Benny talked about with us yesterday, is learning to take what the defense gives you. That's the very steps up and flips it to William Howard. Howard slipping and sliding, short of the first down, but down to the 42, and a penalty flag is thrown at the end of the play. Tony Casillas... The nose tackle, number 75, came back to make the tackle on Howard, but a flag was thrown away from the tackle at about the same time. Ray Perkins looks on as he sees the preliminary indication is against Tampa Bay. And it'll be from the spot of the foul. And Johnny Greyer will tell us all about it. Illegal block, 82 offense. Still second down. So it's still second down, but now the ball has moved back inside the 45 to about the 42. And it's going to be second down at about 18. going to the nickel package on defense and three wide receivers in for Tampa Bay. Testaverde trying to get away from the pressure. Running well and inside the 35 for a first down. Tim Gordon, the free safety, brought him down. But Testaverde will surprise you with his ability to run. He's big, but he can really cover the yardage. Here's where he shows great poise. Now he drops. He's got the look. He starts to step up. Now he's going to start to run away from people. Puts the ball away and say, hey, I'm not looking for a spot to fall down. I'm looking for a first down. Watch, he keeps on going instead of sliding to protect yourself like they tell quarterbacks to do. He knew what he had to get and he went out and got it. He needed 18. He got 24 just inside the Atlanta 35. You can see he's averaging 4.6 yards a carry. In fact, the whole backfield's averaging 4 yards a carry a carry. William Howard picking his way through, fumbles the football. Atlanta recovers inside the 20. Bobby Butler fell on the football for the Atlanta Falcons.
Tries to pick his way here now. Makes a move outside tackle. I think Andre Bruce right there, 93, comes in from the backside, strips the ball, it rolls upfield. Bobby Butler recovers. So Tampa Bay stymied again, and Atlanta still leads it three to nothing. Falcons have the football back. They controlled it for 11 minutes of the first quarter. They lead three to nothing on a 40-yard Greg Davis field goal. And after the fumble caused by Andre Bruce, recovered by Bobby Butler, it is first and 10 Falcons at their own 19. Settle in motion. The Riggs with the football. Nothing doing. Jammed up the middle by Winston Moss, 57, and John Cannon, number 78. Picked up maybe a yard, and it'll be second down and nine. Before this is over, it's going to look like a rugby match. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be sh shoving and play the scrum. Is that what they call it? Scrum, they push, right. push each other around in the mud. It looks like they get in the huddle and then fight for the ball. The footing is slipping away every play. And it just continues to rain hard on a field that was already in trouble. Settle on the draw play. Great through. Near the 30, but pushed back. He's very close to the first down, but was driven back. And again, it'll depend on the spot. Mark Robinson, number 30, really hammered him. They met him virtually head on. And listen to it as you watch the replay. I didn't know we had that many people here. <laughs> <laughs> well, most of those were the 22 guys on the field making all that noise. Yeah, we didn't juice that up at all, did we? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Marion Campbell talking to his team probably said before the game, there's nothing to be nervous about playing before this crowd. We got them outnumbered. <laughs> Just enough for the first down in spite of the big hit by Mark Robinson. Well, the story of the game has been Atlanta's ability to control the football. Davis's 40-yard field goal. And Miller controlling the football with short passes. They mixed it up very nicely. And Tampa Bay had the field goal first missed, got another chance on the penalty, and then had it blocked. And has turned the ball over a couple of times. And the first down for Atlanta. Just inside their own 30. Great trying to get outside. And it's tough for Gerald to run outside even when it's not sloppy because he's just not blessed with breakaway speed. But he does pick up one or two before Kurt Jarvis brings him down. One of the things that makes it tough to run outside on a field like this is there's no way really that you can plant that foot and cut back up field once you get going laterally. That's right. And that makes it easy for the defenders because they know you can't do that. And they know once you're started toward a sideline, you can't plant your foot in the back of the field. So they just take the right angle the way they're going. And they're in a position to make the play. Riggs game three for so second and seven. Miller flipping it out here. Gary Wilkins the tight end. Short of the first down. But another completion and another short pass for Chris Miller. A reminder, this is a doubleheader day here on CBS. The NFL coming up next, game two, will feature the Los Angeles Rams and the Denver Broncos doing battle. So stay with us. That's right after this one on CBS. Third down. About four yards to go, just across the 35. Gerald Briggs on the draw. Breaks it off tackle and gets the first down. He gets across the 40 where Chris Washington and Harry Hamilton bring him down, but there is a penalty flag down on the play. And it appears to have been thrown by the umpire. Face mask against Tampa Bay. There's Riggs on a little delay up the middle, gets a good angle. Here comes the linebacker across, number 51. Chris Washington gets a good hold of it, but doesn't hold on to it. I think that should be five rather than 15, don't you, Steve? Yep, and it is. Yeah. You called it. They mark it at the 45. So inadvertent, non-flagrant. 
however you want to call it. Grabbing of the face mask. On the play, 95, Kurt Jarvis from Tampa Bay was shaken up. And Sean Lee, number 97, is in the game. Gene Lang, maybe one yard is all. John Cannon, number 78, making the stop. You see Gene Lang also wearing that face mask. Quite a few players, both backs and linemen in the NFL, Will, are going to that for various and sundry reasons. On a dark day like today, that shading, though, <laughs> might make it difficult to see where you're going. We had the game early in the year where Randall Cunningham wore one, and he said the difficulty with it being a quarterback is when you perspire, it runs down the front of your mask, but other positions can use it if you don't have to handle the ball, particularly the line. Cunningham's was not tempted. Gerald yeah. yeah. Riggs takes to a big hole up the middle. Has a first down in the Tampa Bay territory at about the 43. Mark Robinson with a tackle and Wayne Radloff, the center, with an outstanding block to open a huge hole for Riggs. He puts it right on Chris Washington. Watch 55 released from the line. You can't see him yet, but he'll have number 51 of Tampa Bay on the ground right there. That opens it up. A tremendous hole for Riggs. Looks like, you know, Tampa Bay had the wrong defense call. The only one they had in the middle of the field was the linebacker. Everybody was pursuing to the outside. They did something wrong in that defense not to have more pursuit in the middle. And Radloff took care of the only guy there, Winston Moss. Riggs again. This time, not much. Maybe a yard to the 40 is all. Tampa Bay sealed off the gaps that time. John Cannon and Winston Moss leading the charge. So it'll be second down and nine. And Marion Campbell is doing exactly what he wanted to do. He has controlled the football with running and short passes. That clock continues to run. Under four minutes left to go in the half. Tampa Bay hasn't had very many possessions, and those that they've had haven't lasted all that long. Unless they've hurt themselves by turning the ball over a couple of times. Lang in motion. Miller with a quick out pattern to him, but it's incomplete. Lang couldn't hang on, and even if he had it, he wouldn't have gained any yardage. Tampa Bay coming with the blitz and Mark Robinson from the safety position, causing Miller to get it away maybe quicker than he wanted to. Third down and nine. Tampa Bay coming with the blitz. Miller sees it coming, feels the pressure, but there's a great job of coverage over here by Hamilton. He rolls up right away on the receiver, gets his arms in there and strips the ball away. He didn't play off, and once you know you're going to blitz, you've got to get up on that receiver. You have no help in the secondary. Miller all day on third and nine. Can't find anybody open. Now flips it out to John Settle, and Settle has the first down. At the 30 of Tampa Bay. Boy, what a job John Settle has done. He's continuing to do it now, even with Riggs back. Miller shows his poise here. He drops back, doesn't get a lot of pressure, but there's great coverage, so he rolls to his left. Now he's got Winston Moss 57 in the middle. When he comes up, he dumps it over Moss to Settle and makes the big play. Now Moss is caught right in the middle there, Steve. What's he going to do? He, he just can't let Miller keep running up the field, so he makes the play to go up. But nobody came and jumped on Settle in enough time to prevent the completion. Miller had the total option that time. He could have run for the first down or thrown it, and he threw it. But Atlanta keeps grinding it out. First and ten at the Tampa Bay 30. Another short out pattern, and it's complete to Floyd Dixon. His second reception of the day. And Dixon out of bounds inside the 25. So a gain of about six will make it second and four. 227 to go in the first half. Atlanta leading three to nothing and just continuing to pick, pick, pick their way down the field. Keep get the feeling that as they're picking their way down the field, they're waiting to throw one deep. Waiting for that cornerback finally to get frustrated. Jump in and try to pick one off, pump and go, and it's all over. Running out and up. Second and a short five. Riggs straight ahead. He's hit first by Eugene Marv, number 99, the Tampa Bay Bucks leading tackler. 
slid off but then got some help. And they'll spot it at about the 22 as we get near the two-minute warning. So with the two-minute warning timeout, we'll take a timeout. Atlanta still leading Tampa Bay three to nothing. Halftime, Brent Irv and Dick with all the scores and highlights on the NFL Today Halftime Report. Leslie Visser will also be along with the story of the Cardinals' rebirth in the Arizona desert. And the owner of the Cardinals, whose controversial move brought them there. NFL Today Halftime Report coming up in just a couple of minutes. Third and three, Atlanta at the Tampa Bay 22. Riggs on a delay. First down, inside the 20. To the 19. Chris Washington, 51. Making the stop again. And another Atlanta first down. I'm surprised Atlanta made the outage on that play because Tampa Bay showed Miller a blitz. They stayed in the blitz, and usually when you have uh, seven or eight guys in the line of scrimmage and run a delay, you could stop it. So it's to the credit of Gerald Riggs that he could still make the outage to get a first down against the line that was stacked against him. He is so strong. Ninth first down for Atlanta. And you saw that graphic that the Falcons have been pretty good pushing it in from inside the 20. Miller flipping it out to Riggs. And Riggs out of bounds, stopping the clock at about the 14-yard line. Kevin Murphy, 59, bumped him out. One minute, 13 seconds left to go in the first half. Steve Zabriskie and Will McDonough bringing you the NFL on CBS from Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. So far, the Falcons have been in control. Even though they only went three to nothing, they have kept the football the vast majority of the time. John Settle trying to get outside. Get the block from Dixon and scoop forward for a first down. Inside the 10, at about the 8, Mark Robinson finally got him down. Good second effort by Settle. What a year he is having as Atlanta calls timeout. Stopping the clock with Pep on that last play for the first down by Settle. It appeared as if he might have twisted his knee. Watch him stepping back on the handoff right there and see him start to limp away at the top left of your picture. I think he did it just pulling out his knee. Watch his left knee right here. See him slide in the mud. His poor footing. Settle again. Running hard. Fumbles the football, but it's a touchdown. Touchdown Atlanta as the ground caused the fumble and Settle had broken the plane. I'd like to see that one over. I would like to see that one over again. It was very close, but the official on the near sideline, right in front of the play, shot both hands up as the ball came loose, making a very emphatic call. Make your own judgment. As Settle does a nice job of running. Okay, cuts inside his block, bounces off a tackle, runs over another one. Did he get in? I don't think he did. Okay, I don't think he had the ball over the goal line. You got to break the plane. Okay. I don't know, Will. I disagree with you. I think the ball did come down on the goal line and then bounce out. Tough, tough call. That's why they're looking at it again. They're holding up the extra point. Upon further review, the play stands. Okay. A great effort by Settle here all the way. You know, first of all, breaking the tackle, then running over another guy about the two-yard line, and then having the presence of mind to try to get it out there and get in the end zone. And with a wet ball and wet field, you can see where the ball would come out on impact, as it did. So Greg Davis to attempt the extra point. Chris Miller to hold. And it's good. 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Atlanta with two field goals, or rather a field goal and a touchdown to lead 10 to nothing. Very close call as John Settle, with excellent second effort, got the ball to the goal line before it popped out and upon further review of the replay it stood so 10 to nothing Atlanta Davis kicks off and Donnie Elder drifts back but it is not Elder it is Don Smith who has it and he is tripped up as he crosses the 15 yard line just 41 seconds remaining in the first half 10 nothing Atlanta we'll be right back to Atlanta in just a minute to do something here before the end of the half and they have to start with their worst field position of the day. They have started at their own 28, turned the ball over on an interception. 
The Atlanta 32 but had a field goal block started at their own 40 and turned the ball over with a fumble. Now Vinny Testaverde and crew start at their own 17 after a seven minute 45 second drive by the Atlanta Falcons. Lars Tate, good blocking in a big hole in a first down. Out to about the 28 for Tate. Mark it at the 29. As the clock continues to run with now 28 seconds left in the half. Tate and Howard haven't had much of a chance to show yet in this ball game what they can do. Now 15 seconds remaining in the half. Tampa Bay not e may not even try no, to run off another play. They're not going to run it off. They've, Vinny looked over the bench. There was no signal in. They just waved them off. Said, let it let it run out. Let's get in the halftime, uh, get in the locker room, regroup, and see what we can do in the second half. And dry off. The rain continues to fall as the first half ends here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. And it's been all Atlanta, 10 to nothing over Tampa Bay. And this is what we talked about at the end of the first half. Started at their own 28, had an interception. Got the ball on a turnover, the Atlanta 32. Field goal was blocked after getting a second chance. From their own 40, they fumbled it away. And now at their own 17, at the end of the half, they were able to run only one play because they only had about 47 seconds. So actually, they only had three possessions in a whole half because right. Atlanta had the ball for 20 minutes for a two. Now they start from their own 25 and test the to throw on first down, completes it. The number 84, Bruce Hill, the leading receiver on the Falcons with 53 catches. Jesse Tuggle, number 58, made the stop on, on Hill. You know, it surprised me, Steve. It, the field's in terrible shape. It's been raining all day. It's still raining. And they went out and let the high school band moss around the whole halftime. <laughs> I, I, mean, know, I thought about that when I saw them on the field. Know, it just surprised me that they did it. Normally, they wouldn't let that happen. No. Grass field. Field's bad enough as it is. Second down about five is William Howard. Bangs it straight ahead and gets close to the 35 before Tony Casillas, the nose tackle, brings him down. Casillas, an interesting story, now in his third year out of Oklahoma, really virtually had made a decision, well, I guess to give up professional football, had some problems in training camp, and Marion Campbell, I think, has really handled Casillas in the situation very well, and Tony is having a very good year. Third down and two. Testaverde looking for the short pass and it's not there. Running. Did he get past the marker? No, he did not. They'll mark it just short at least of where that marker is on the ground and Testaverde argues a little bit. He thinks he danced out past the marker getting enough for the first down. So it's all going to depend on the spot and the measurement. He thinks it's good. He made it official. He says, hey, get over. That's the first down. <laughs> so the chains are going to have to be brought all the way across the field from the near sideline to the far for the measurement to take place. Again, he's been doing the right thing most of today. He sees the stake, goes for it. But one of the problems there, Steve, is that's not always the right mock because that's not on the same side of the field that's as right. the stakes. They just eyeball that. They sort of just field. eyeball that. That's just thrown in the general direction. So you can't look at that and say, hey, this is it. I got to get there. Because if you do, sometimes you step right on it. It's not enough. Well, you can tell right there that the marker that is placed is about a half a yard ahead of where it actually needed to go. So it's a good indication that if you're going to be off, be off in the favor of uh, more than 10 yards. And Testaverde picked up more than enough for the first down. So from the 36, first and 10. And he's coming out throwing here in the second half and he completes it to Lars Tate. Short yardage to the 40 yard line before Jesse Tuggle makes a good stop on Tate. Gain of about four. We'll bring up second down and six. And there is an injured player, Robert Moore of Atlanta, the strong safety back around the Atlanta 40 who is still down and now being attended to so a timeout is called and Robert Moore has been down for some time on well, the top of your screen Falcon safety man number 34 Robert Moore backing up goes down on his own it shows you how treacherous this field is today was down for a few minutes but he walked off under his own steam slightly injured his right knee 
Second down and six now. Testaverdian company in business at the 40-yard line. Over the middle and complete to the tight end, Ron Hall. And Hall has the first down and then some as he gets into Falcon territory to about the 47 before Elbert Shelley, number 37, makes the stop. A little change in the plans of the uh, Bucks. They're throwing a lot more here in the second half. Testaverde does a nice job sitting in the pocket, wants to go deep. Now he's going to check off, throws it right out there. Hall takes it upfield. I'll tell you, Tony Casillas, we didn't see it there. He gave Vinny his first shot of the day right after that pass. Testaverde now 6 of 10 for 52 yards passing. And this half, he's 3 for 3. First and 10, Tampa Bay. Pitch to William Howard. Good blocking, and Howard busted for another first down. Or at least close to it. As he gets inside the 40 before Scott Case and John Rady bring him down. And it is a Tampa Bay first down. Tampa Bay will move the ball fairly well in the first half. They just, as you pointed out, really only had three possessions, and two of them ended on turnovers. Well, the one thing that's sort of jumping out, I think, so far is all the criticism of Testaverde. He's not smart enough. He doesn't read well. You know, the cerebral part of it doesn't look like he's made a mental error here today. The only error he's made is throwing the interception, which is a physical error. He threw to the right guy. He just didn't throw the ball right. He is taking what the defense is giving him. And that's what Perkins has been trying to get him to do as Lars Tate scrambles for a couple of yards to the 35 in the grasp of Mike Gann, number 76. This is a football game, isn't it? On grass, they're dirty, it's raining, it's muddy, they're pounding one another, playing from tackle to tackle. Trying to knock the guys back. There's Mike Shula, son of the Miami coach, an assistant on the Tampa Bay staff who signals in the plays from the offensive coordinator upstairs to Vinny Testaverde. And it has, for the moment at least, almost stopped raining, a few light drops fell. Testaverde fires, and it's complete to Bruce Hill. And Hill running hard after he makes the catch. Gets down deep in Atlanta territory inside the 15 before Scott Case makes the tackle. Atlanta defensive coach Fred Bruni says, Ray Perkins' teams love to throw the ball in the seams, and there it is to the wide receivers. You don't like it like if you're Bruce Hill 84 a wide receiver, because that's where you don't want to go to catch the ball. But he hung in there, and again, it was a great throw. Right on the money by Testaverde. A 21-yard pickup. And so it's first and 10 at the Atlanta 13. Tampa Bay with their first real scoring threat. Lars Tate with William Howard leading the way. A penalty flag thrown into the pile, which would lead one to believe that holding might be the indication. John Rady made the tackle. And it is holding against Tampa Bay. I hate to see that. Not because, you know. I'll tell you who you else tell me hates to see it is uh, Ray Perkins. Yeah, but you tell me they haven't been holding each other out there all day today in this mud. Holding. 72 offense. Still first down. Rob Taylor. The offensive tackle. The culprit. Here he is, 72, coming off the ball. Trying to move his man to the outside. There's the push. Here comes Lars Tate inside. What's he going to do? Get him for a takedown here or what? Come on. I, I don't see Come it. Come on. I don't see where that's that was any 90, different. Yeah, that, yeah, I mean, Tim Green, 99, wasn't even in the play. It had nothing to do with the play. Now, Kerry Good, or rather, Kerry Good, number 27, is in the backfield. On with William Howard. The test of he wants to throw. The interference, interference called on Good. Kerry Good going for the ball, and 58 Jesse Tuggle blasted him right before the ball arrived. That was an easy call to make. Wide open, but there's the shot. I mean, it's not even close. Tuggle, you know, because he was beaten on the coverage, had his back to the play all the way, didn't really know where the ball was, so just delivered the blow. Pass interference, 58 defense, first down. So the holding penalty had moved them back to second and long from the 23. Now it's going to be first down and goal at the seven. And Testaverde perfect so far this half. You wouldn't call that a makeup, would you? 
<laughs> no, it was too blatant. Yeah, that was what I mean. Too blatant. From the six. Benny with time throws it. Was it intercepted? No. I think he, well, the officials in the goal line said no. Now, Bobby Butler trying to go for the pass could not come up with it. The problem was, uh, sorry, Steve, the problem was his receiver fell down. He takes a quick step. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now he wants to set up and fire. His receiver goes down. He still tries to throw it into him rather than take the sack. And here comes, yeah, Bruce was a nice guy. He, he could have drove him into the ground. He didn't. He says, go ahead. That's the way number one choices treat each other. They get all that money. <laughs> when you're six foot five, like Testaverde, you get that much height going and it'll fall on its own pretty easily. <laughs> High center of gravity. Oh. So 14 seconds on the 30-second clock. Second and goal from the six. The timing pattern too long. Into the corner of the end zone intended for Mark Carrier. So it'll be third and goal from the six. In the first half, Tampa Bay picked up a total of four first downs. On this drive, which has been impressive, they have five first downs. But the problem here is all year long, this is where their offense has really struggled. They have had a difficult time scoring inside the 20, getting touchdowns from inside the 20, and now they're stalled here again. And they are three of five today on third down conversions. Third and goal at the six. From the shotgun. Thrown to nobody. Again, his receiver fell down. Don Smith slipping and falling. Frank Pillow was underneath number 80, and the ball was too tall for him. Watch him now. He looks out to the left. They're going to run a pickoff with 47. Smith, there it is. He falls down. See him at the back of the end zone? He was supposed to come to the outside. Well, there's a problem, too, when you compress the amount of room in which you have to work and you have a wet field, yeah. the cuts become sharper and therefore more difficult he, to make. He simply fell down. He was coming to the outside. The tight end was dragging his guy inside. It was a routine pickoff. Everybody uses down near the goal line. The receiver just fell down. John Carney with a 23-yard attempt, and it is good. So Carney now one of two, and Tampa Bay finally on the scoreboard. 10 to 3 Atlanta here in the third quarter. Tampa Bay its first points of the day. And it's Evan Cooper who takes the kickoff and wins up a nice hole up the middle before it closes quickly. Sean Lee, number 97, came out of nowhere virtually to knock him down. Good return by Cooper. And Atlanta will have fairly good field position. Come up next, the second half of our NFL CBS doubleheader. Game two will feature the Los Angeles Rams and the Denver Broncos. So stay with us as the NFC West and the AFC West do battle. There you see the 49ers and Rams tied right behind New Orleans. Still on the hunt for the playoffs. And in the AFC West, the Denver Broncos in that three-way log jam. And if you think about it, San Diego still has a shot. <laughs> if things go crazy the last few weeks. I mean, anybody can win that game. Gerald Riggs straight ahead as Atlanta goes right back to the game plan. Run inside and throw short. And short is all Riggs is able to pick up as the rain has now picked up and is more heavy. That second game of this doubleheader is so critical to the Rams. They thought they had it made for the playoffs three weeks ago and they lose three in a row. Uh, John Robinson said this week he never believed that could happen. That they'd be struggling to make it to the playoffs and now they are. Both the uh, NFC and AFC West a virtual toss-up. Bruce Hill, who was injured earlier, has been taken for x-rays on his ankle. Miller firing incomplete in and out of the hands of Floyd Dixon. He was covered by safety Bobby Putrell. So it'll be second down and nine as the ball is still at the Atlanta 35. He's been limping ever since he hurt that leg in the first half it, it, while... Uh, Tampa Bay was on the drive at the beginning of this half. He was running up and down behind the bench, kind of trying to keep his knee loose. Watch him as he comes out of the huddle, walks back and forth. That right knee has been stiff on him, but he's still out there playing. And it's hard to get the stiffness out when it's cold and damp. Emphasis on the damp today. Third and nine. 
Miller under pressure. He's running well now. Has the first down and gets out of bounds. And they really love that dimension of Chris Miller here in Atlanta. He is some kind of athlete. Marion Campbell calls him a gym rat. He could have played professional baseball. He loves basketball. He can do it all. Real bad mistake here by two defenders. There's 94 Goff. Watch Lee, 97 coming across. They let him get outside of containment. They were both to the outside of him to start with. You never let the quarterback get outside, particularly when your defense is playing a zone defense behind you. There's nobody around to come up and make the play. That's going to might be a critical mistake in this game because they would have had a punt out of their own end. Now they've got it up near midfield. First and ten at the 46. Rich gets outside. They block the corner very well. First down and more. Rich still going. They can't put him down. All right. Down near the Atlanta 20 before Harry Hamilton finally bulldogged him to the ground. Watch the nice block on the outside. Briggs bumps outside. Where's the contain? Where's the safety man? Nobody's there. He cuts up the gap. Now watch him drag Hamilton. You gotta get this guy low. You're not gonna bring him down up there. Now he gets some help from behind. Tremendous run by Riggs. A run of 34 yards by Gerald Riggs, who has come back strong after playing sparingly his first week back last Sunday against the Raiders. He's having a big day today, as is the Atlanta offense. First and 10 from the Tampa Bay 20. Riggs again gets a couple to the 18. He has now carried 16 times and picked up 88 yards. And on that rug run by Riggs, Will, you mentioned earlier that Sidney Coleman, the right outside linebacker for Tampa Bay, had committed inside on an earlier play. He did the same thing again. And again, there was no outside containment. And that is probably the read the running back takes on that play, Steve. Where is that linebacker? You look up to see, is he coming inside? You know, Riggs has been belting in there all day off tackle. Coleman commits inside when he does. Just bumps it out and nobody's there. Went for 34. Second day. Miller completes it to Michael Haynes. And Haynes is close to another first down, down near the 10. Michael, the rookie out of Northern Arizona, who was beaten out in the Olympic trials in a heat with Carl Lewis in the 100 meters. Consequently missed a great deal of training camp. But made the big tackle in the first half for Atlanta when he ran down Harry Hamilton from behind after Hamilton had the interception, nobody in front of him, and just the speed of Michael Haynes tracked him down or else it would have been in a Tampa Bay touchdown. And as you pointed out, Will, probably the only guy who could have run him down. Third down, one yard to go as Haynes was just short. That's another pitches it out to Riggs and Riggs <laughs> recovers the fumble. Harry Hamilton upset with himself because Harry had a chance to pick that ball off and didn't get it. This is not what you would call a great call on this field. John Settle, now they're gonna run the option. See, he wants to pitch the rig, throws it out there left-handed. I mean, that is not a call I would make on this day with two guys that haven't been handling the ball. Now we know John Settle has good hands because he's a good receiver, but you're asking him to do something in the rain that he never does any time. So here's the field goal attempt by David. And it is no good. It is wide to the left. Davis with about a 32-yard attempt wide to the left. So with 5.50 to go in the third, it remains 10-3 Atlanta. And with the Falcons leading the Bucks 10-3, 5.50 to go in the third after the missed field goal attempt by Greg Davis. And it's Testaverde and Company who drove to a field goal on their opening position. This half. First and 10 from the 20. Lars Tate pickup of a couple to the 18 before he's knocked down by Jesse Tuggle number 58 it'll be second down and eight and Benny feeling the uh, effects of the day as he goes back to set up you footing know, is more important however will than the uh, uniform cleanliness the Heisman's right after the Army Navy game isn't it? right said yeah 530 yeah he said Vinny you know he has a vote when you win it you have a vote but he said he doesn't know who he's going to vote for yet because he hasn't had a chance to really look at the candidates 
So he better both turn and both got to be in the center first. Whoa, first down completion of Mark Carrier and more. As Carrier made a good move after catching the ball and got up near midfield before he was run out of bounds near the 47 of Tampa Bay by Bobby Butler. This is what we talked about a little bit at the start of the half. You know, one of these defensive backs is going to make a mistake on a short pass. Here it comes out here quickly to carry. Watch the move he makes. Scott Case misses the tackle, puts his head down right on the way, knows he's in big trouble. Fortunately for him, his safety men, including Robbie, uh, Bobby Butler, came from the other side of the field to make the play. It's a gain of 25. Carrier now with four catches for 55 yards, and Testaverde, 8 of 15 for 98. So he's nearing 100 yards passing. William Howard, as a flag goes down into the pile, Howard goes through into Atlanta territory to the 45, but it'll be holding against Tampa Bay. And the Bucks have really hurt themselves, not only with a couple of turnovers, but with a number of penalties at key points. Holding, 60 offense, still first down. So the call on Randy Grimes, that's the second time Grimes has been called. Randy in his sixth year out of Baylor, Bubba, called for holding. You know, it's amazing. Atlanta's had 21 running plays today, and they haven't had holding. You don't think there's been any holding in mean, Well, you know they've held. In a day like today, <laughs> you know, to get involved in that stuff is ridiculous. Well, the one that we were able to detect on the replay doesn't even look like holding. Testaverde fires over the middle, and it's complete. It's a fine diving catch by Ron Hall, the tight end. In his second year out of Hawaii, and a first down Tampa Bay as they overcome the penalty in one fell swoop. Testaverde is not gonna do a better job than this all year, believe me. Right back, when he releases the ball, watch Ron Hill going down the seam. See, he's covered, but he throws it back into the inside, okay? Brady's got his back to the play, can't see the ball. He leads him inside into the opening with a great catch. Game at 24 when they needed 20, so it's first and 10. Tampa Bay just inside the Atlanta 40. Lars Tate breaks it back and breaks the tackle, running over people, and finally hauled down inside the 35. Tim Gordon, number 41, had to get some help. So Tate with a good first down pickup. Gain of five, so it'll be second and five. Marion Campbell with a defensive signal. Phoenix jumping back in front of Philadelphia. That's a surprise. In Philly. The Philly plays from behind all year in Philly, India. They're always they coming have, from behind. They have won a lot of games in the last part of the fourth quarter. Chicago still leading Green Bay, only seven in the third. Testaverde again, complete. Down to the five-yard line. Again, it's Ron Hall. If it works once, it'll work again, and it did. That's First right. and goal, Tampa. Steve, right back with the same call. Exact same call. Hall just comes off. Watch him to the right of your screen. The tight end, 82, releases off the line of scrimmage. Rady, 59, is running with him. Can't stay with him. Hall gets behind. A beautiful throw right over his shoulder. Drags the defenders with him right to the five-yard line. Ron Hall is from Hawaii, and he is injured. He practiced in improving his concentration by walking on hot coals. He looks like he's walking on hot coals right now. You might need him with those socks being in the sweat. On first and goal, very short yardage. Maybe to the three-yard line goes Lars Tate. So it'll be second down and goal. Tampa Bay had first and goal at the six-yard line earlier and had to settle for a field goal. And again, Mike Shula sends in the signal under the direction of Ray Perkins. Second and goal at the three. And hard again. William Howard with a yard maybe to the two. And that's all. Michael Reed on the stop, along with Tuggle. So it'll be third and goal. 
tables have kind of been reversed, Will. You've got a team in Atlanta that's good on the run, and Tampa Bay's been good against the run. Now it's been Atlanta's run defense that has really come to the forefront and stopped Tampa Bay's running game pretty much all day. Desdeverdi's had success passing here in the second half. But the Bucks have had a, have a real problem running against Brian Campbell's defense. And it's third and goal at the two. Tate, up and over, touchdown. Well, that's one way to get it in, but you get it close enough. That's right. Can't do that from the five. <laughs> Somebody can. I'd like to see him. Lars Tate. <laughs> Barreling over with his 215 pounds. He sort of bolts it up right. He cranks up. Watch the little hop. Here it goes. Whoop. There he goes. That wasn't bad. That was from about the three. But look at the surge by the offensive line. He jumped right into the arms of Michael Reed, and Reed was pushed back into the end zone. So here's John Carney to attempt his first regular season NFL extra point. And it is good. So the Tampa Bay Bucks have come back here in the second half. Tate scoring from two yards out, and it's tied at 10. Guard run by Lars Tate and the extra point by John Carney, and it's 10-10. Carney kicks it off for Tampa Bay. Taken by Tim Gordon, and Gordon with a good move, still on his feet. Out to about the 30. So a good return by Gordon as and the Atlanta Braves allowed only the second touchdown they have given up in the last 15 quarters, which culminated an 80-yard eight-play drive with Vinny Testaverde passing the primary force. There's John Carney. He was with them in camp this year, so when uh, Igwe Buque got hurt, they brought him back because they were familiar with him. He knew the snapper, he knew the holder, and he's back here today. Kicked the field goal, kicked the point after. But his two kickoffs are, like they say, just right to be run back. Landed on about the 15. And I said the uh, Atlanta Braves allowed that touchdown. They give up some runs. Oh, fumble. fumble snap by Miller. And it appeared as if Atlanta got the ball back. About the only thing the Braves didn't allow this season. <laughs> was a touchdown. It was a touchdown. <laughs> they gave everything else up. I'll tell you what, if it was the Braves, they wouldn't be playing right now. Because you can barely play football the way it's going now, let alone baseball. Miller picked up part of Atlanta Fulton County Stadium when he recovered the fumble. It's amazing that was the first time today you had sort of a bad exchange in these conditions in that mud between center and quarterback on either team. Loss of two on the fumble exchange. Second down and 12. Miller to throw quickly over the middle. Off the hands of Dixon incomplete. Floyd Dixon coming back with that injured cheekbone after being out for a few weeks. Got a hanky. Is he wiping the rain off his visor? There yep, it is. That's what he's doing. Get those windshield wipers on. There's Ron Hall. Twisted his ankle. Two big plays on that last drive. Two very good catches. Yep, and two well-thrown balls by Testaverde. Atlanta 7 of 10 on third down conversions, facing third down and about 12. And Miller under pressure. Chooses not to run and throws it incomplete. I don't know what James Milling was thinking of, but Milling was looking around and didn't see the ball come his way. All he had to do was take a step or two, and he could have caught it, but he didn't. Similar play to the Falcons last series when Miller gets flushed out of the pocket again. Goff makes the mistake of coming inside. Lee makes the mistake of not staying outside in containment. But this time, the linebacker stays there, forces Miller to throw the ball downfield. Milling was standing there, you know, looking around. I think he thought that Haynes coming across was going to make the catch. You know, he says, this ball isn't for me. This is for Haynes, and he let it go. Rick Donnelly on the punt, and a fair catch called for and taken at the... 29-yard line by Bobby Futrell. So as you see, just three seconds remain on the clock here in the third quarter. And Tampa Bay will have a first and 10. Next Sunday here on CBS, the NFL moves into its 14th week, and it all begins at 12.30 Eastern time with the NFL today, as usual. Then at 4 o'clock Eastern time, there will be a matchup of last year's wild card game in the NFC, New Orleans at Minnesota. That's all next Sunday right here on CBS beginning at 1230.
with the NFL today. Vinny Testaverde in the second half, 7 of 10, as he pitches to William Howard, and Howard goes nowhere. Tim Green, number 99, up very quickly to stop him for a loss. So that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Tampa Bay 10 and tie as we start the fourth quarter. Vinny Testaverde, the story of the third quarter, 7 of 10 for 120 yards passing after being 3 of 7 for 30 yards in the entire first half. And Vinny to throw again. Over the middle, and it's complete. Don Smith with a reception, knocked down almost immediately by Robert Moore. But Vinny has come back here in the second half, and Will, they're going over the middle primarily, and then doing a lot of it on first down. I hope you can see this from the bench. On the, maybe the left side of your screen as you look at it, they had only had 10 men on the field. Here comes 99, Tim Green. He blitzed from the bench. He was the guy that wasn't on. He kept running right into the blitz. There's the throw again across the middle. They're going after the middle on the lane. That was funny. They had 10 guys. He was late. He blitzed from the bench, and they picked him up. It's a new play, blitzing from the bench. William Howard trying to cut back in the muck and mire, and he gets it down to about the 43 before Rick Bryan, number 77, brings him down. Again, it is really difficult to cut, especially when you're about 245 like William is. You get that much weight going one direction, and in the slop, it's hard to get enough traction to make a cut. And so many of these kids nowadays play on turf in college. I mean, on right. artificial surface, you know, that they're really not used to playing in this kind of a field. They mark it at about the 43, so it'll be a pickup of four, second down and six. Tate in motion. Testaverde stands in nicely, and it's incomplete, almost intercepted. It was intended for Don Smith, and then John Rady almost had a chance to pick it up after it went off of Smith's hand. Now watch Joe Ferguson walk over. Now you're going to see Mike Shuler give the signals. There's Ferguson right there. Most of the second half, he's been over there, jumping in front of Shuler from time to time. You know, last week, a lot of the Tampa players complained that it looked as though Chicago at times on defense knew what they were going to do. So I was wondering when I was watching the Ferguson do this, sort of masking Shuler in the second half, if they were concerned that Atlanta might have been picking up things too quickly from watching these signals. Well, Ferguson providing some screen. Third down and six. Terry Dude into the game, and the pass incomplete. It was intended for Mark Carrier. And it'll be fourth down and six yards to go. Atlanta coming with a blitz, a blitz rather, and Evan Cooper from his defensive back position to put some extra pressure on Testaverde. So the punting unit is on, and Ray Criswell will punt for the first time. Lou Barnes, number 85, drops back for Atlanta. Criswell hangs it high and angles it for the sideline, and it takes the bounce back toward the middle, and is batted back by Odie Harris. So it'll be down just inside the 10-yard line when we come back. Lars Tate, this culminated an 80-yard drive Two big plays in the drive. Testaverde to his tight end hall to get the ball down deep. So it's 10-10, Atlanta first and 10 at their own nine. Settle. John breaks out of there. Great move by Settle. He's off to the races. Finally run down from behind by Ricky Reynolds. Atlanta at their own nine-yard line runs a play into the line and winds up all the way down at the Tampa Bay 41, a 49-yard run. Settle makes this run on his own. It's jammed up in the hole. Watch the spin move. He's going to kick out. There he is. Because back to his... Now he breaks out. All the pursuit is gone. One guy left back here. Bobby Futrell comes over, makes a bad effort, misses the tackle. But fortunately for Tampa Bay, they get people around to run him down as Ricky Reynolds does, but you travel in that shot, you gotta make that play. What a year John Suttle is having. Leading rusher, leading receiver for the Atlanta Falcons. And still doing the job after replacing Gerald Riggs. Now it's Suttle and Riggs together. Miller gets it away quickly and has to, completes it to Ken Wisenhut, the tight end. And Wisenhut hard to bring down as he picks up good yardage on first down before he's finally knocked down on the far sideline. Kevin Murphy was unblocked and came right at 
Chris Miller. But Miller got it away. Gain of five on the completion to Wisenhut. So it's second down and five. Atlanta at the Tampa Bay 36. And again, the CBS Sports Wire keeping you up to date. Phoenix and Philly go at it. Second half of the doubleheader will have it here for you. Los Angeles and Denver. Rams and the Broncos. Still, Chicago did 7-0 over Green Bay. Incomplete intended for Dixon. And it was a catchable ball. Ricky Reynolds had the coverage, and it just went right off Dixon's shoulder pad. You know, that visor could be bothering him, Will, because we've seen him drop a couple. Well, I think on this one here, Steve, he tries to catch it with his arms rather than his hands. In a day like today, you got to try, see, off his armpit, off his chest. A day like today, wearing gloves in there, I think you got to first try to catch it with the hands because the ball is so slippery. Third down and five. Three wide receivers. Miller gets it away deep for Haynes. Did he catch it? Touchdown. Not only did he catch it, it's a touchdown as he slid into the end zone as he received the football. 37-yard TD pass. What an explosive drive by Atlanta. There he is. He's got the coverage beat. He slides. He catches. Now it's a touchdown because he goes across. His momentum keeps him going right across the goal line. He wasn't touched by any defender until he's in the end zones for his touchdown. And there's Miller's reaction. Charles, White, Charles Wright, brother, number 21, was defending. And Michael Haynes with world-class speed and a pretty good slide for the touchdown. Davis with the extra point, and Atlanta, in dramatic fashion, breaks the tie to lead 17 to 10. In the rain, as it continues to fall here in Atlanta, Fulton County Stadium, dampening the spirits as have the seasons of these two teams, but it's not dampening the spirits of the fans who have braved the weather and have come here to the stadium today as they have seen their Falcons retake the lead. Davis's kick going out of bounds, so he'll have to do it over with the penalty assessed. And next Saturday, CBS Sports presents one of college football's greatest traditions, not to mention rivalries, the 89th Army-Navy game, which will begin at 2 o'clock Eastern time, followed by the presentation of the Heisman Trophy Award live at 5.30 Eastern time, 2.30 Pacific. That's all next Saturday right here on CBS have to make Barry Sanders of Oklahoma State, I think, an odds-on favorite right now. Rodney Pete, the voters have until December 1st to, to vote, so I think that hurt Pete yesterday when USC lost to Notre Dame and moved it wide open to Sanders. Testaverde, the Heisman Trophy winner of past year, part handing it off to Tate, and Tate jammed in the backfield. Rick Bryan. Number 77 met him there, and actually there were three or four red shirts around Andre Bruce among them so it's a loss back to the 34 second down and about 11 yards to go those Heisman Trophy ballots that were being held until after that USC Notre Dame game probably were held to see what he did I think you're right I think it's Although they say it's tough for a junior to win it, Barry Sanders has had such a tremendous when he is uncertain as to what Mike Shula is signaling or perhaps missed part of the signal, takes no chances. He calls the timeout. He did there, went over to the sidelines, got everything straightened out. With 10.30 left to go in the game, Tampa Bay down by seven. You don't want to necessarily use up a timeout, but you don't want to make a drastic mistake either. Three wide receivers all to the right. Testaverde under pressure, trying to find his way out and cannot. Sacked inside the 30, John Rady, number 59. <laughs> I think, Tim, I think Atlanta switched his defensive philosophy here in the last few minutes after Vinny had the big third period. They're coming after him now. I think uh, earlier in the game, they 
sort of focus their guns on stopping the Tampa rushing game, and it was effective for them. But then when Vinny had the big third period where they scored 10 points, tied up the game, now in the fourth, that's two plays in a row. They've been bringing everybody after them, and that time Brady made the play. And they've lost yardage on each of the plays, so it's third and 15. Tampa Bay at their own 30. That's the very quarterback draw. Trying to play off a block. Took a shot from behind. Robert Moore, the strong safety, met him head on. And Vinny is short of the first down. Marcus Cotton came in and got a good lick on Testaverde as well. It's a great call, great execution. It should be a first down, but the blocker in front of him does nothing. Throw that block. He's got to get up here to the next stripe you're going to see. And if there was no hesitation, look at He comes up a yard short. So instead of a first down, they now have to punt. Rick Mallory a little tentative, and Testaverde had to wait to see what happens. So Ray Criswell with the punt. Lou Barnes back as it skids along the wet grass. Barnes picks it up at about the 21 and returns it back to about the 26 before he's knocked out of bounds. A 35-yard punt by Criswell. And the Falcons leading by seven with nine minutes and eight seconds to go and the football back. Just so many times in this game where Tampa Bay is close to making good plays and then just one little thing goes wrong. You know, there was a great call, it was great execution. He might have got another 15 to 20 yards. Yep. Mallory just went out and fired out and made that defender do something. Instead of just let him stand there, Vinny could have cut off it one way or another. But you know, that's what happens, or the kinds of things that happen, the change in transition. They're always just a half a step away from having what they need to have happen. Inside handoff to John Settle, and Settle across the 30 to about the 34 as he continues to run hard. Mark Robinson, the strong safety, made the stop. Settle getting close to 100 yards on the day, as is Riggs. They're both right around 90. Atlanta going back to their first half velocity. Pound it, let that clock run, grind it out, now that they've regained the lead. Primus in motion, but Settle comes back this way, and he's tackled in the backfield. Great penetration by Kevin Murphy in his third year out of Oklahoma, who got settled in the backfield about the same time that John took the handoff. I think Murphy reads the formation. Watch him close right down the line. There he is. Takes the angle right away like he says, hey, whenever they're in this formation and the, they send a, a wing, mat, wing back out in the motion to the right, they're on, running opposite because he didn't even pay any attention to the wig man, which usually is his responsibility coming in motion. He just closed fast made the play. Third down and six now. That near the 30 is Miller roll. And it's complete. Stripped of the ball is Dixon, but it is a completion and a first down out near the 40 of Atlanta. It's got to be calling the part of Atlanta because let's remember Dixon dropped a couple in the third period, yet Miller rolls out, waiting for the break. Here comes Dixon. Yep, he had possession. Bobby Futrell tries to rip it out of his hands and does, but he not only had the catch, but he had the first down. And with the ball going out of bounds, Atlanta retains possession. So just inside their own 40, first and 10. 7.36 to go in the game. Four wide receivers in the game for Atlanta. But they give it to the lone setback, Riggs. A flag is thrown at the line of scrimmage again by the umpire which again would indicate holding Irvin Randall number 54 made the tackle on Riggs but the good gain by Gerald will be nullified he threw it right at the feet of 55 center Wayne Radloff who didn't want to accept it sort of turned his back and wanted to try to deny it was there but we'll see holding if that's the call 55 offense still first down Reminds me of the story of an offensive lineman once called for holding who picked up the referee's flag and vacated his nose upon it before <laughs> handing it back. Here it is, little draw to Riggs. He wants to read it now. There's Radloff, 55. Oh, that wasn't bad. That was sort of like a tackle. <laughs> sort of also shoved him out of the way at the end for good measure. 
Could have gotten a couple of flags on that one. First down and 20. Back at the 30. Swing pass to Riggs. Riggs all alone breaks one tackle. Another. And finally, after some white shirts get there, Riggs is down. Atlanta retains possession even though the ball came out. Riggs gaining out to about the 37, Eugene Marv. Here it is, the little swing again. Here's Riggs, he's tough to bring down when he's running upfield. Boom, see you later. One, two, three, by Randall, four. Breaks another one, five. Well, finally they get everybody to get a shot at him. Gerald Riggs with extremely strong legs, and that has to help. It looks like he's got an equipment problem with his helmet. That has to help on a muddy field when you've got those strong pins underneath you. The other thing that helped Gerald keep his feet was he was out near the sideline and not in the middle of the field where it's all torn up. And uh, the first defensive backup, Ricky Reynolds, didn't put his arms out. He tried to hit him to the ground with a block rather than try to wrap him up. That's like trying to knock down a fire hydrant. Second down. Firing incomplete off the hands of Dixon again. Again, it was Reynolds with the coverage. And Floyd Dixon unable to hold on. Pressure by Eugene Marv, number 99, on Chris Miller. Very difficult to catch the ball today when it's high. Very difficult. All you got is your hands to use. You know, you're not, you want to get a shot at it with your hands and then be able to pull it into your body and put it away. Philadelphia jumped back in front. Cleveland coming back to tie it up 10 10. No home field advantage for Buffalo yet. <laughs> Wait, an for it. wait another week. Yeah, but Cincinnati still trying to be sure they're in the playoff. Maybe they have a little more insurance. Third down, 15. Miller under pressure, gets it away, but it's incomplete over the head of Settle. And Sean Lee, the nose tackle, buried Chris Miller just as he got the ball off. So it'll be fourth and 15, and the punting unit comes on for the Falcons coverage by Tampa is excellent. Miller has time if you count it out. Look at he's in the pocket three, four, five. Doesn't see anything. Says oh I'm going to get out of here. Boom. Look at the shot he takes. Luckily it's not head on though. It's a little bit of an angle so he really didn't catch him under the chin where he can really do some damage. Sean Lee only has him by about a hundred pounds. Donnelly gets it away and it's a boomer. A penalty flag is thrown as you tell. Futrell takes it at the 15. It's going to be called back for Big hole for Bobby. Donnelly couldn't bring him down. Finally, Michael Reed makes the tackle. But the flag was thrown while the ball was still in the air. This holding against Tampa Bay on this side of the field. Before, as soon as the ball is punted, they knock down the coverage guy on the left-hand side. They pull him right to the ground about five yards. That's the indication. So Donnelly, who tried to make the tackle, probably have to punt it again. I don't know they're going to get enough for the first down. It was fourth and 15. They'll tack it on after the... Uh, where he catches it, then they tack Holding. on the penalty. 40, receiving team. Will the catch. That's going to be half the distance to the goal. As it was inside the 20 that Futrell took the football. So Tampa Bay backed up against their own goal line, trailing by seven with under six minutes left to go. You're watching the NFL on CBS from Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. A soaking Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Steve Zabriskie and Will McDonough with you. The first half of our CBS doubleheader. With less than six minutes to play in the game. Atlanta leading 17 to 10 over Tampa Bay. And the 50-yard punt by Rick Donnelly. And the holding penalty tacked on to the reception. And it's first and 10 from the eight-yard line for Tampa Bay. Testaverde under pressure. Unloading it incomplete intended for carrier on the far sideline scott case had the coverage so it'll be second and ten and you're right will atlanta has really changed their defensive approach they're bringing somebody on almost every play to try to get to test and after the third quarter vinnie had seven of ten for 120 yards you can't blame them 
But when you do that, you also expose yourself to the big play. What it seems as though what Tampa wants to get is the matchup they just went after. Carrier against Case, one-on-one. -on -one. They've tried it twice, but both times Case has had the coverage. Second down. Testimony faking in pressure in the end zone, gets it away. And was he in the grasp? No, says the referee. And Mike Gann is really angry. He wanted to have the call of the quarterback in the grass for the safety. It was very, very close. The viewer can make the call. Vinny goes back. He's going to pump fake. He had Carrier coming inside. Wanted to throw it deep. The time isn't there. Now he backs up. Is he in the grass? It's got to be grass coming and control. Is he in control? But he also has to throw it to somebody. And there was nobody there. You know, not only when, it's right, it could have been grounding and it should have been if it's grounding in the end zone. It's a safety a penalty in your own end zone is two points and you get a punt. And even under the liberalized rules this year, you cannot ground the ball to avoid a loss. Testaverde throwing wide and too tall for Frank Pillow, who is leveled as the ball goes by. So it's going to be fourth down and ten. Charles Dimry and Scott Case were both over there. So Testaverde avoids the sack and the safety is not called for grounding. But now Criswell is going to have to punt it. And they have not done that well this year. No, the punting game has not been one of the strong suits for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Lee Barnes back. Criswell gets it away. It's very short. Barnes takes it at about the third. Oh, fumbles the ball. Tampa Bay recovers. Dan Turk, I think, number 50. There he goes. He's going to keep that one. When you're an offensive lineman, you don't get a shot at that very often. It is Dan Turk out of Wisconsin who comes up with the fumble recovery. Barnes couldn't hold on. The strip right there by number 40. Elder. Turk comes in, makes the play. Donnie Elder, one what of the best kick returners in the league, turns the tables. Very smart play. I mean, that wasn't by chance. You could see him reach around, got his left arm around Bonds, then reach around with his right hand and hook the ball out. Gave it a bat. That set it free. Tampa gets the break. They and just got a bad one before that. Now they get a good one. And Atlanta had a break. It was only a 28-yard punt. Short yardage on the play, probably a gain of three is all. So it'll be second down and seven or eight. Mike Shula again signaling into Testaverde. Now five minutes left to play as the clock continues to run. Tampa Bay trailing by seven, 17 to 10. They are in Atlanta territory after the fumbled punt. Our state. Trying to cut back, and again, the wet field comes into play. Tate had a place to go, but he couldn't get there because of the soggy conditions, and Mike Gann and Rick Bryan bring him down. Close Tampa Bay, boy, they, they're no stranger to this, are they, Will? There's the three wins this year, all by field goals. You know, that's the three wins, but then they got a bunch of losses by a touchdown or left. And here they are in another game, seven points. Looking at it, could be a touchdown or left. Losing by only one point to Minnesota. Third down and four. Testa ready to throw. Good protection. Intercepted by Case. Scott Case picked it off. Atlanta comes right back with another turnover. William Howard made the stop of Case after the interception. And Testaverde, who leads all quarterbacks, is picked off again. Atlanta does something nice here. They take a cornerback and they have him cover Hall. That's the difference, okay? Puts more speed over there in front of the tight end. They ran a different defense that time than Testaverde's been looking at all day. They've been trying to cover him with safety men. Here it is again. He thinks he's got the one-on-one -on -one matchup. The only difference is Case covers quicker. And he gets right in front of Hall, makes the big play. Bad play for Tampa. 
Testaverde's second interception of the day and his league leading 30th of the year as Gerald Riggs takes the handoff, makes the first man miss and picks up two or three yards out to about the 47 or 8 yard line of Atlanta. Ken Wisenhut, the tight end, gets up limping. But it appears he will stay in the game for Atlanta as Marion Campbell paces the sideline. Have to give a great deal of credit to the Atlanta coaching staff for that call, you know, because Vinny's been going to Hall, making the big plays here in the third period. They've been trying to cover him with linebackers. Remember, Rady was chasing him around with safety men. Then all of a sudden, a critical situation, they anticipate Tessa Verde might go to him again, throw over the quicker defensive back, the cornerback. James Primus in motion, and the pitch goes to Gerald Riggs. Riggs driving hard. Gets to about midfield before he's brought down. Now there are just three minutes remaining in the game, and the clock is stopped as Tampa Bay calls timeout. So Chris Anything crazy. Even if we have to punt, let's keep it. Even if we have to punt, they still got to take it 80 through the rain, through the mud, with only one timeout. If they can do that, good luck to them. I try to run Riggs on that trap play up the middle. If you get six, you get it. If you don't. You're going to put Atlanta in bad field position. They're going for it. They're going to throw. Miller firing it low and incomplete. Intended for Dixon. So it'll be fourth down and six at midfield. And they'll punt it away from there. Clock stopped with just under three minutes left now as Donnelly comes on to punt again. Averaging 39 yards a kick this year. Look Bobby at, Futrell, pardon me, Will, dropping you, back. You look at this game, and it, so far the difference is two great individual efforts by Atlanta on their last touchdown. Settle breaking out of his own end for the long run. And a great catch by Haynes for the touchdown. Futrell almost called for the fair catch, but didn't. And a great punt by Donnelly as it rolls dead inside the 10. That's exactly what Rick Donnelly wanted to do. And Testaverde and company are going to be a long way away after a 42-yard punt inside the 10-yard line by Donnelly. And I think that's what you're going to see here right now. Then trying to go after Vinny. Testaverde passing from his own goal line. First and 10 from the 7 underneath the William Howard. Howard breaks out and he has about 10 yards free until the Atlanta defense can close down on him as he crosses the 20. Tim Gordon and Robert Moore make the tackle. One of the looks you're talking about, I think you're going to see them bring Andre Bruce here, 93. See him trying to come up the middle, their best pass rusher, and get in front of Testaverde. Good protection for him. Howard breaks the tackle right here, turns away from Tuggle, cuts it back upfield, but it's tough. You know, you really can't make the quick cutter in daylight today. And look where Andre Bruce was. He was back trying to get in on the tackle. First down, Testaverde can't find anybody open. Finally dragged down by number 99, Tim Green, right there. And we have the two-minute warning. So Tampa Bay with two minutes to tie this game up, trailing by seven. Minutes to play in what has been a tight ball game, and Tampa Bay's third quarter made it so. Atlanta dominated the first half, controlling the football, driving with runs and short passes. And taking a 10-3 lead, Tampa Bay tied it up at 10-10, and then Atlanta with a very dramatic drive, a big run by Settle, and a couple of big passes. Now, you do not have a single defensive lineman on the field for Atlanta. No, yes. All linebackers and defensive backs. Seven defensive backs and four linebackers against Testaverde. And intended for the tight end, Ron Hall, who tried to make a one-handed grab but could not. So the incompletion will bring up third down and six. The ball at the Tampa Bay 26. 155 left to go in the game. And Atlanta's been throwing Andre Bruce all over the field today. He's been rushing all the time. He was exhausted. After that play, he knelt down for a good 15 seconds on the ground trying to get his breath. Here he is again. Rushing three linebackers, defending with seven defensive backs. Then he is only one of six on third down passes. And he's under pressure here, firing it off of Smith and incomplete. Jeff Smith had a catchable ball at midfield and couldn't hold on. 
So Testaverde throwing on the run. Now one of seven on third down passes. Two have been picked off. So it's fourth and six with 147 left to play. And with just one timeout, they're not kicking. They got to go for right. That ball should have been caught. If it did, it would have uh, given Tampa Bay a chance to get in back in the ball game. Now they need a miracle play, really. Out of the shotgun again. No defensive lineman in for Atlanta. Testaverde has some time, but again, nobody open. He's going to try to run for the first down and get out of bounds. And he appeared to get enough yardage and then some as he gained about 10. And it'll be first down with 139 to go. Makes a good athletic move here. Sees with all the guys. He hasn't got the coverage. Now he looks for the first down, knows where he has to go. Here comes Tim Green, number 99, trying to chase him down from behind. Smartly gets out of bounds. Stop the clock, regroup, go after it again. Benny passing 12 for 27 for 190 yards. He has carried five times and gained 58 yards. A 14-yard gain on that carry. First down, over the middle, incomplete. Intended for Don Smith. And again, not a poorly thrown ball. Off his hand, stopping the clock with 134 remaining. It'll be second and 10, still at the Tampa Bay 40. It says 12 for 28 in the stats, and I bet there's been, he's got six that have dropped. So if it said 18 for 28, you'd say, hey, he's having a great day. That's right. But you look in the paper tomorrow morning, it says 12 for 28. You say, oh, he's under 500 again. He must have had a bad day. Of course, it is not very easy to have a good day for anybody when the rain is falling as hard as it is and the conditions are as wet as they, as they have been all day. Again, over the middle, intercepted by Scott Case, who goes down immediately, and that should seal it for the Atlanta Falcons. Third interception of the day for Testaverde, the second for Scott Case, and the fourth Tampa Bay turnover. Second in this period for Case, great coverage again. He's got Carrier, anticipates, steps in front, makes the play. Scott Case now with eight interceptions on the year to lead the Falcons. And he wasn't a starter at the beginning of the season. Dimry got hurt and they put Case in and he's had himself a career year. Testaverde has thrown three interceptions and 31 on the year to lead the NFL. So 128 to go in the game. Atlanta has the football back. Just gonna sit on it. They're in this sit on it formation with the tailback. Tampa Bay has one timeout left. We'll see if they use it, and they do. That is their final timeout, a minute 25 remaining in the game, and we'll be right back to Atlanta. All these close games, I stare at the stealing night when I'm in my bedroom saying, why is it happening? And I'm sure he's going to stare at his ceiling again tonight and say, why did this happen? Why do they drop the ball? Why do they make the plays they do? One of the most frustrating things is Atlanta just falls on the ball again, and the clock continues to go now with a minute 20. For coaches, you can tell them, you can show them, you can incorporate a lot of things. And, of course, with both these coaches and young teams, they've had a lot to teach and a lot of young players to teach. You can't go out and do it for them. That's the only that's thing right. you can't do, and that's where the frustration comes in. If you look back on this game and you look back how it was won here in the final period, Offensively, Atlanta was stuck in their own end inside the 20. Settle makes a great run. He breaks out. He runs for 48 yards, getting something out of nothing. He was stuffed. Then they had the great touchdown pass. Now Scott Case on defense makes the two interceptions. And that's the, the difference in the ball game right there. Four individual efforts. So Atlanta is going to move to five and eight. And the Falcons have won four of their last five games. They are coming on. Tampa Bay and Vinny Testaverde fall to 3-10 and ten on the year. Two young teams learned more about themselves today, but they are headed as far as their records are concerned in opposite directions. As Ray Perkins comes to meet Marion Campbell in the center of the field, the clock still showing about 10 seconds remaining, but there will not be another play. 
Atlanta could have something to say, Will, about the NFC West as they play New Orleans and San Francisco in the next two weeks. 